Okay, so we commencing uh, 19th of February. I actually think this is, um, inshallah, I think this is actually going to be an easier week. And I will, I will outline a, you know, a very simple reason why, actually. Um, not sure why that's a data issue. Anyways, and it all begins with a higher time frame. That's the very first thing I learned with ICT, you know, higher time frame is the, um, is basically the context, okay? It's the underlying narrative. That's where your narrative is going to be derived from. Uh, that's the key reason. That's the meat, basically, of it, okay? So, reason why I'm risk on and why I think it's, you know, why I'm bullish and I think it's going to go up is because, look at this, on both of them, Dixie and EU. So, you have the monthly fair value gap. Now, you got two, actually. You got the inversion here both and you got the normal Ferrari gap now both of them look at this this is like a really strong rejection of that after pricing to the bottom of that okay uh, that's uh, let's have a look so that's 360 and the highest uh, you didn't quite get there but here we pretty much did okay now look at the weekly okay so we're dropping down to the lower the next lower time frame logically both of them if I just spawn the annotations in so this is your fair value gap, and these fibs are representing the inversion levels. Look how strongly rejected, not just the fair value gap, the inversion, and like the entirety of it will close outside. Likewise for here. Okay. Um, now with this in mind, so yeah, I was saying, um, look at the strong close of the weekly. Just with that alone, you don't even need the annotations actually or anything. That was just me explaining how we close way above this. But look at this, just with that, you know, the, uh, again, I think February, you know, it was it's better than Jan, definitely, but it's not, it's still not running. So you're still not seeing it go towards the distribution side of things, which is towards the drawn liquidity, which is expanding higher, risk on. It was still in the manipulation phase for the, for the month, for the monthly AMD cycle. So this was the manipulation phase here. I think we're now going to see the distribution. And for that, the first target, I think, is this SIBI. Here, the weekly high is your um, near-term take profit target, okay? And then, of course, we want to work on the larger um, levels, which are the um, inefficiencies inside of this price action. Which, if you just go down on the daily, um, well, it's not available there, but look at this on the four-hour. And then, of course, the daily highs are there as well as stepping stones. So obviously, um, that means just higher levels. You might get some s slowdown of uh, inside of this. Now, because we're risk on, and because the analysis, uh, the analysis slash the bias or the narrative on the higher time frame sponsors a higher run on the euro. If we're really bullish, we wouldn't even respect this. We wouldn't treat it any. We wouldn't even give much attention to it. We would literally just go right through it, like it's not even there. This inversion very really gap, okay. But if we, we can also slow down, for example, if we've already like moved up a lot and the and the days obviously the sessions closed, which is most likely to happen, then you might see us see us make a high of the day or high of the session, you know, in one of these three areas here, the low midpoint or the high of the inversion or even this fair value gap. So I think that's something we're probably you know most likely going to happen. And then yeah, but obviously overall we risk on. And uh, yeah, we're looking to long the euro against the dollar de dollar declining. So this is your weekly draw for fair value gap daily here. Got a got a weekly low, which is also the corresponding weekly high here. And uh, you can say the same thing about the pound dollar. So if we're about to go up, let's just go on the monthly again. Now pound even didn't even go there, so that that shows you straight away like how bullish pound is. It's stronger than euro. In fact, you can just go on the euro GBP to determine that. You can see like, you know, this is struggling against the pound. So that's also another evidence that pound is most likely gonna wanna run higher. It's um, more than likely not even gonna visit this anymore. I think at this point, if the dollar's already done doing the visit to the uh, premium fair value gap on the weekly and it's already done its manipulation and now it's going to distribute lower than this is going to distribute higher 
and attack the equal lows, sorry, equal highs. So weekly highs, a few of them actually stacked up here. So this is a weekly high, which is also daily equal high. So this is a key area. And then you can then aim at this and then maybe higher levels there for the pound. These are perfect equal highs here for the pound as well. So this is what I think will take place most likely. Uh, again, news-wise, we're not really busy. Nothing on Monday, Tuesday, even Wednesday, not much, apart from FOMC minutes, actually. And then on the Thursday, you have, that's the busiest day of the week, and then Friday, again, nothing. I think, I'm not too sure about Monday because of the holiday. This one. But for the Tuesday and the Wednesday, I think they can be some good days, those two. You can see some good amount of movement in them. So yeah, keep an eye on them.